Okay, we're live streaming, guys. Nice. We're live streaming our last GBM of the year, guys. This is the last time you're going to see some of these people. Um, Silence. Okay. Thanks, <laughs> heck. I said something sad and everyone's like, all right, yep. No emotions today. I'm not kidding. We, we'll see each other at inauguration. Um, but yeah. Yeah, we'll have inauguration, so we'll see each other again, probably. Mm -hmm. um, does someone want a motion to start the meeting? Or have Brianna, have you taken attendance? Um, I'm waiting. We have enough people? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to try to do the thing that Sam does where he takes the picture. So, okay. Also, isn't there a way to just copy yeah. Zoom attendance? Carolyn and I talked about that. There actually, should be a way. Actually, I think so. Yeah. You can like save the attendance for afterwards. That would be a lot easier. And also we're really busy today. So I kind of don't want to do roll call. Okay. I'll do that. I'll do that. Um, okay. Thank just you. Like just send it to me. Okay. Um, Okay, could I get a motion to start the meeting? Motion to start the meeting. Okay. Okay, all in favor of starting the meeting, please go to the um, reactions tab and hit the raise hand feature. If you're voting against or if you're abstaining, then you can privately message me. Okay, looks like the meeting has started. Um, okay, the first thing we're gonna do are um, SGA um, executive board report. So Sam, this is your moment. All right, great. Yeah, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, thank you to Mahek for uh, introducing me for our last GBM of the year. I mean, I'll, I'll save most of this for inauguration, but you know, we've done a good job, proud of what we've accomplished and it's gonna be an exciting meeting. Um, stuff I've done this week. Uh, first, I wrote the uh, co-chair's bylaws amendment, or rather the co-chair abolition bylaws amendment. So we're going to be talking about that today. And we also had our first transition meeting um, for the new executive board uh, last Sunday. I believe we're having another one on Thursday. And um, we are also working on scheduling new and old executive board pictures, uh, which will be exciting. Uh, so we have some photographic evidence that this year existed. And with that, I will pass it on to Mahek. Hello, everyone. Um, sad this is our last GBM of the current administration, but looking forward to next year. Um, PRDC is going to have a meeting sometime this week or next week, so we can elect a new PRDC chair who will be working with the new vice president. Um, and yeah, worked on inauguration, which is next week. Um, and if you guys can't come, then just please let me know. And um, yeah, work on the senior resolution send off. So that'll be a nice little heartfelt moment for us at the end of GBM. Um, all right, next is Addie Perlman, executive treasurer. Hello. So um, first is that like a general update is that SAC is working on the semester allocations for the fall. Um, so we've been doing that and we have another meeting this Wednesday about that. And then I just want to clear up any confusion about budgeting stuff. So for the first part, we had 235k for SAC. We are still within that. We've spent it on like the fall event stuff um, and uh, liquid fifth. So that was 1445 for the liquid fifth. And then in the spring, we allocated 81 $1,433 and then also um, spent money on Liquid Fifth, Mind in Motion, which was our photography, um, graduation robes, and that's been going really well. People have been picking them up and then also our monthly grants. Um, so we are still within budget for that. And then SGA, um, basically in just like plain transactions that I put in is $542.79 for the plushies for like the LHAC and then the Kahoot prizes. Um, and then with our obligations, so it's going to take me a sec. Um, so if it gets confusing, just let me know and I'll put it all in the chat. Um, but with our obligations currently, um, we will have, um, we've committed um, about, oh wait, here we go. In commitments, SGA has um, 6,783.50. So that would mean we would have 8,216 left. So the commitments for the um, HSS sex week bill, the smoothie bill, and then if um, the green uh, bill passes tonight as well as a GAR bill passes tonight, that includes that as well. Um, and we committed to lottery and Kahoot, but only a portion of that um, will be spent this year. Um, so if that wasn't clear, please let me know and I can put anything in the chat or any questions, but yeah, so. 
All right, thank you, Addy. Next, we have our executive secretary, Brianna Solitelli. All right, same as everyone else. Sad that it's our last meeting, but excited for the new year and to be done with this year. Um, and then in addition, I met with Carolyn today to just talk about things for the future. Um, and I had CMC put up the last post for our GBM on Instagram, which you guys may or may not have seen because we got it up a little bit late. Um, just talk about some plans for the future. I'll be doing transition meetings individually with Elena. And if anybody has any questions about stuff or like comments, concerns, feedback, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you, Brianna. Um, all right, next we have class council reports and we're gonna start with seniors. Will's not here, um, so can we get someone else? Elise, what's, what, what have you all been up to? Sorry, um, a lot has been more from Ananya and Will's side. Um, last I checked, just planning last bits of the senior event, so. Thank you, Elise. Next we have juniors. Yeah, um, just basically, you know, same old, same old, really prepping for our movie night on the 30th, which we're very excited for, and just getting all the logistics done. There's a really quick turnaround on that. So um, SLI has been really, really helpful in making sure that we, um, oh, get that done. And then transition doc is going well. We should have it done on time. Thank you, Nathan. Next, we have sophomores. Uh, so I met with Calvin a few days ago, and he's been super helpful and planning our end of the year event as well, which it looks like that's gonna be on the 28th. So we're kind of getting stuff ready for that. Um, actually asking for volunteers to help like with cleanup and stuff like that. So looking forward to it. Thank you, Anthony. Um, next we have freshmen. Uh, currently looking towards uh, the future and what kind of um, things we want to continue, like our relationships with current admin with administrators like SDS uh, also put a lot of manpower towards the res life uh, topics. So also uh, sad to see the seniors leave, even if we never got to see them in person. I have a tear. Um, next we have committee reports, um, academic affairs, Senator Agenda and Senator Zhang. Uh, yeah, so pretty much similar things to look into the future. Um, we sent an email out last week or the week before, I think, um, requesting that professors don't uh, have work or exams or anything like that on spring break days. And we got a positive response from the deans. So hopefully professors listen. Um, we also had a meeting with uh, Dean Martin to increase pilot funding or uh, increase support for pilot. And uh, there are gonna be some positive plans moving forward for that. So uh, maybe increased pay for pilot leaders uh, definitely more classes available over the summer and next semester, and then um, just more pilot leaders in general per class. Uh, and then finally, yeah, we're also working on transition documents, so seeing what we can work on next year. Awesome. Thanks, Veda. Um, next, we have civic engagement. Senator Wang. Yeah, so I think last week, Toby might have talked about um, how we met with the election work group, and so Towards the end of that week, we elected a couple of people to work on proposal drafts about what specifically a university-wide holiday for election day might look like. Um, so me and Kobe are on that. And then we're also working with Ms. B from CFC to think about other ways that students can help out virtually with um, volunteering around the vaccine. Um, so like if you want to call and register people online, uh, virtually, something like that. And then we're also just working on transition documents and reflecting on our year. Thank you, Grace. Um, next we have finance, Senator Ha. Hi, everyone. Um, finance committee is currently working on the review process for um, semester grants. Uh, just a quick, I guess, summarization point for that. Uh, we are looking at the individual line items for each budget request instead of doing the slash, which we have done previously in the past. So we will be hopefully done with that by 
beginning of May. And for uh, transition documents, Addie and I are working on a combined one for SAC and finance. And thank you everyone for a great year. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Um, next, we have Health, Safety, and Sustainability, Senator Chen and Senator Tai. Hi, um, I'll be doing the updates because Megan is not um, great for talking right now. Um, so we are still in the preparation of sex week, which will take place next week. That actually mm -hmm. rhymes and that's amazing. Um, and it hopefully will be good. Mm -hmm. And we also, uh, finish the transition doc so that um, it's uh, it's good for the youngsters to review soon, I guess. Uh, and uh, we just had our last meeting, so that should be a great end to a semester of uh, virtual things, which um, it will be the last for me because I'm a senior, but hopefully it will be the last for you all too. And good luck going forward. Thank you, JJ. <clears throat> Next, we have Internal Affairs, President Cho. Do you want to do it? He's not here. Yeah, so we had um, two bills. We had the um, APIDA caucus bill, and we had the co-chair's bylaws amendment bill, which we reviewed on Monday, um, and they both were passed, and so now we're going to present them in GBM. Um, and had some great discussion on that. Um, next, we have student org, Senator Kalahasti. Yeah, just two things. Um, working on wrapping up and finishing out transition docs. I know I had a conversation with Carolyn about this last week as well. And I think we're gonna get an orgs email out sometime this week with like best practices for orgs to do transition stuff as well, especially for boards that are probably going to start resuming more in-person responsibilities compared to this past year's boards and making sure that transition goes smoothly for them. Um, and just working on getting our selectivity climate survey out this week. Thank you, Ananya. Um, next year, student services, President Singleton. So we met uh, Sunday and then earlier today as well, just kind of going over projects um, in contact with Brody right now to actually look at extending their hours, especially as we head into finals. So excited to get feedback on that. And then also looking at our transition docs and then getting ready for next year. Cool, thank you, Anthony. Um, we're gonna do caucus reports next and we're gonna start with the Black Caucus, Senator Oninanya. Hey everyone, um, not much to report. We're just planning on um, meeting and updating the contact sheet because um, elections for ASA and BSU have um, been completed as well. So we'll just be, um, look, be on the lookout for a meeting um, to update the new contact sheet for next year. Cool, thank you, Obi. Um, next we have the Spanish and Latinx Caucus, Executive Secretary Tilbatelli. Uh, just like last time, if you are in the caucus, please check your text. I sent out another one, but I don't think it went through. So text me instead, because I really want to schedule a meeting. And then in addition, um, I will not be chair of this caucus next year. I'm taking myself out of the running because I don't think it's fair for me to do both exec vice president and being chair. So if anyone else is interested for next year or freshmen come in and are interested, um, just let me know. And for elections next year, we will keep you in mind. Thank you, Brianna. Um, next, we have the Women and Gender Minorities Caucus, Senator Rieger. Yeah, we're finishing up some projects with the two, two bills we've got this week, but the team that's looking into Greek life in OIE is also going to continue working over the summer so that we can hopefully get some concrete plans for where to go next year. And Ireland and I have a meeting with Linda Boyd from OIE tomorrow to discuss that. Thank you, Elena. Um, that sounds exciting. Um, and then last but not least, we have our advisor report, so Carolyn. Hey, everyone. <clears throat> so first thing is one, I appreciate that everyone is thinking about the transition docs. I think almost everyone has mentioned that. So that's important for, um, I think, SGA moving forward. And I love that you all are keeping that in mind. The next thing is leadership awards is next Tuesday, um, right before inauguration actually. So it's at 7 p.m. SGA sponsors eight awards. Um, and so it would be great if you are all there in support. I imagine you have some friends who were either nominated or selected for an award. 
um, but we would love to have you. You can register from the homepage of Hopkins Groups. It's the first purple image on the left of the homepage. Um, and then um, in general, I'm looking forward to the end of the year events. This will be like the first real iteration of me being able to see what SGA um, can do as far as event planning is concerned. Um, and you all are doing a great job in the planning pieces of that. So excited to see those come to life. Um, and last, I just wanna say thank you for your service. This is my first year as, advising, as advisor for SGA at Hopkins, not my first time advising an SGA. Um, this is like the seventh year of that, but um, I had a good time with y'all in the midst of a pandemic, you still were able to accomplish a whole, whole lot. And um, I appreciate the time and commitment that you all made to this process and to this organization um, while you were still trying to balance like being a human being you know, in lockdown. So great job. Thank you for your service. Um, and y'all are great. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, all right, for that, we're going to go to new business. We have a lot of things on our agenda. Um, the first being the DOSL budget submission. Um, Executive Treasurer Perlman is going to present that. Um, Addy, I can give you screen sharing abilities so you can go through it at your own pace. Cool. But yeah. Thank you. Um, Let's see, how do I, uh-oh, can, can y'all see this? Yeah. Okay, sweet. Um, so this is the submission for next year. Um, so before I start, like it's, this submission is in line with what was submitted, like for what would have been this year without COVID. Um, so I went in line with that. Um, so I will start with um, our, anticipated spending for SGA operations. So the amount requested was $22,500. And that's in line with what we did um, pre-COVID. The difference is um, the categories. So um, the categories are the same, but the numbers are a little bit different. So for co-sponsorships, um, that's $6,000. And so this funding is intended to help like all student groups in achieving success with their events. So it's whatever SGA co-sponsors with another group. Um, and then large events. So this number is decreased, but um, that's because of the large program fund. So the large SGA events will be $3,000 and that's like co-sponsored like events. Um, and I de decreased it after talking with Karen as well from 6,000 to 3,000 um, because created the large program fund which will fall under this large SGA event. Um, and so that's gonna get 5,000 and because of COVID, like a lot of large gatherings on campus are difficult to achieve and any students that graduated in 2020, 2020 or just like any experiences that we may have missed out on um, this last year can hopefully be recreated through the large program fund and like generate school spirit, create special like events and moments um, and just kind of to, you know, get back to that um, larger gathering if, you know, COVID allows. Um, hopefully that will allow for, you know, more school spirit and kind of getting those moments that everyone missed. Um, and then for SGA initiatives, that's $4,000. And so that's like what we've been doing with Wellness Week, Sex Week, SGA suggestion boxes, et cetera. And then um, for finance committee initiatives. So it used to be finance committee initiatives and new group startup funds, but I combined them. And so it would be $1,500 with $500 going toward the new group startup funds. So that means um, when a group registers, they can at like say, hey, um, we would like $100 um, for our startup. So that's what that is to. And then we can also take some of the $1,500 from that to increase that. Um, so that's what the finance committee initiative will have like a large role in. Um, and then miscellaneous. So it was 2000, but I shifted it to 600 to fill out the rest of these um, like categories, because I think that a large focus next year will be on like programming and, you know, getting orgs back to like what they wanted to do and like what they did previously. Um, and so the money can be moved from category to category, but this is the outline um, that we created for this year. And so that's been cut from 2000 to 600 to fill out those others and to create the large program fund. And then retreats and banquets um, were raised back up to 1,750 because hopefully they will be in person and what they used to be. And so there was more money provided for that. And then marketing 150 for CMC for advertising and then um, committee on student elections will get the 500 again for their uh, budget. So, and then we have the Student Activities Commission, um, a request of 270,000 also in line with pre-COVID. Um, so this year for SAC, we got 235,000. 
Um, and that was split between like the annual allocations and the monthly grants. So with the 270,000, that would be split into 225,000 for like the funding for the year and then the 45,000 for monthly grant funding. And the reason why it was split this way is because for um, monthly grants, um, I upped it by 5,000 because getting back in person, there may be more unforeseen costs um, and anything like that, that groups, you know, getting back into person events. Like, I just feel like there could be more room for monthly grants or even new initiatives that groups come up with that they might want funding for that they don't initially put in their budget request because when we get back in person, maybe they have an idea that they wanna do that they haven't done before. So that 45, that extra like 5,000 can help to pad that and um, help groups with any kind of initiatives. So that is the budget request. Um, thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Addy. Um, so if anyone wants to motion for a Q&A or a moderate caucus to move straight to voting, um, we can do so now. And thank you, Addy, for all your work. Motion to vote. Can I get a second? Second. OK, all in favor of moving into voting procedure, please go to the reactions tab and hit the raise hand feature. If you're abstaining or voting against, then you can privately message me. <laughs> also a reminder for everyone to vote, please. OK. Um, looks like it passes. Um, congratulations, Addie, and thank you to the Finance Committee who also helped with this. Thank Keep up you. the good work. All right. Um, next, we have our pronouns resolution. Senator Parrish is going to present this. Um, Ireland, do you want me to screen share or would you like to screen share? Um, if you could go ahead and do it, that would be nice. Yeah, I got you. Okay, um, just let me know where you want me to stop. Okay. So this is a resolution that I wrote with feedback from the WGMC and other LGBTQ peers I have, along with Demery from LGBTQ Life. And it focuses heavily on the lack of pronouns in university systems, such as CIS and Blackboard and myjhu.edu and how this um, lack of pronouns in the system has led to a lot of students being misgendered by their professors, their TAs, and other people in power, which is very uh, uncomfortable to say the least. Um, so uh, we are calling for the addition of personal pronouns section to be added to uh, assist and also class rosters. And we also want to support. <laughs> we also want to support LGBTQ life on the current efforts on on this front because uh, we do know that they are currently working on getting pronouns added to university systems. And we also support people who have neo pronouns, no pron no pronouns, and people who aren't comfortable sharing their pronouns. And um, we want to make sure that the university will put will promote the sharing of pronouns by keeping the pronouns section accessible, which has been a huge problem with, with the um, preferred names section, which a lot of people have trouble updating or they don't know it exists. And that's a whole other issue. Um, <laughs> and then we also wanna have them encourage any student who is comfortable to add their pronouns to the uni university systems because obviously the change starts with us. And if like, if you're emailing somebody and that person sees that you have your pronouns in, the, uh, in your email, like it's more likely that they'll also do it and it just becomes more normalized and more comfortable for everybody. And then we also wanna make sure that uh, Hopkins provides the, their affiliates with easy to access resources on how to add their pronouns to their email signatures, such as a template and generally just having the university move towards the normalization of pronoun usage. And that's it. Uh, 
Okay, so um, anyone can motion for a moderate caucus or for a Q&A now if you would like. Motion to vote. Seconded. All in favor of moving into voting procedure, please go to the reactions tab and hit the raise hand feature. If you're voting against or abstaining, then you can privately message me. Also, if you vote against, um, please private message me too. All right, looks like this passed unanimously. Um, congrats, Ireland. Um, we know you worked really hard on this and this is a great initiative. Um, okay, with that, we're gonna go to our next item, um, the WGMC website bill presented by Senator Rieger. Elena, do you wanna screen share or do you want me to screen share? Uh, I can. Okay. Okay, do you see? Yeah, we can see it, I can see it. Uh, a lot of this is just reiterating the presentation from last week. So we have the findings that are basically just what the website will have, a centralized listing of various types of resources um, that will be run by the WGMC. Um, and then here we have the resource or the, re yeah, the resource that will be run by the WGMC, the informational section on sexual and reproductive health will be run by ARSH and the blog will be run by WGMC and Saru. And I think you definitely heard a lot about that last week. And then it'll also have information on the organizations and how to join. And that's a lot of where we need the WGMC branding. So the WGMC's responsibilities will just be in maintaining and updating the resource map and also in working with Saru for the blog portion. And just a note that if we do have the WGMC name on the website, then it'll be demonstrating the SGA's commitment to supporting people. So good for us too. So the purpose of this bill, it's not to actually create the website because the website is already created and it's gonna be up and running no matter what we decide. It's just to give WGMC permission to have our name and the SGA name on the website so that we can actually give credit to the people who have worked on it and it'll be through WGMC rather than just individual so it'll be more impactful for the students and credibility and for SGA and demonstrating our commitment. And this is information on the review committee for the blog which again we talked about a lot last week so if you had any questions. Safety measures. I don't think that this was discussed as much last week. So the review committee will be the primary safety measure. It'll just make sure that no personal info gets out and that students will be comfortable with what's shared on there. Um, there will also be the quick escape button. So in case that there's a trigger on a page, then it'll quickly exit and hopefully mitigate any harm. And there will be a pop-up block, this was mentioned, to prevent mandated reporters from reading the blog posts and more resources on services provided by the school that would hopefully mitigate any risks of posting and or reading any content on the blog. SGA's responsibilities in this will just be in allowing use of the WGMC and SGA name and also in publicizing it. And finally, the supervision is basically just saying that if the members of WGMC don't fulfill the duties so it's quite above um, in maintaining the website and working with Sari for the blog, then the WGMC names, WGMC's name will be removed from the website. So if you have any questions, I can attempt to answer them. I know that we had last week, um, Michael Vidal to come because he actually worked on it. So. This is mostly just about getting permission to use the name. All right. Motion. Thank you, Elena. Um, if anyone would like to motion for a Q&A, moderate caucus, or to move into voting procedure, you may do so now. Motion to move into voting procedure. Second. 
Okay, all in favor of moving into voting procedure, please go to the reaction tab and hit the raise hand feature. If you're voting against or if you're abstaining, then please privately message me and Brianna. Okay, looks like we are now in voting procedure. If you are in favor of passage of the bill, then please go to the reaction tab, hit the raise hand feature. If you're voting against or abstaining, then you may privately message me. All right, congrats, Elena. It looks like it passes. Um, really looking forward to seeing what else WGMC does next year. All right, next is the APIDA caucus bill. Um, presented by Senator Kalahosti. So Matt, can, can you screen share for me? Yes, can screen share. Can you guys see it? Yes. Okay, just let me know how far you want to scroll. Okay, yeah, this is um fairly straightforward. Also, I'm going to turn my notifications off. Um, this is like quite straightforward, I think. Um, findings and purposes, Hopkins has a pretty large um, Asian community. Um, the abbreviation that's used in this bill is APIDA, so Asian Pacific Islander and Desi American. Um, Hopkins has a pretty large population of this community um, and we don't have a caucus for it. Seemed like we should have one, I think, especially since a lot of students have wanted a better formal space to talk about issues at the university affecting APIDA students um, in recent weeks, but I think this has been a sentiment that's been growing for a while. Um, we have a number of APIDA senators in SGA, felt like a thing that we should do. Matt, can you scroll a little? Um, this follows pretty much the structure of every other caucus establishment bill that we've had. Um, so we'll uh, work with a number of APIDA orgs, um, including multicultural student orgs such as IEC, SASH, um, Asian Interest Fraternity and Sorority Life Groups. Um, and there's like a set of topics that we hope that the caucus will be able to address and be able to hold conversations on. Um, it's right now at, at minimum bi semesterly meetings, um, same caucus rules in terms of who can be in leadership positions, having to be people from Senate um, as before for other caucuses apply. And yeah, I don't think there's anything else notable to go over. Awesome, thank you, Ananya. Um, so if anyone wants the motion to move into voting procedure, um, moderate caucus or a Q and A, you may do so now. Motion to move into voting procedures. Seconded. Okay, all in favor of moving into voting procedure, please go to the reactions app and hit the raise hand feature. If you're abstaining or um, voting against, then you may privately message me or Rihanna. Okay, looks like we are now in voting procedure. All in favor of passage of the um, bill, then please keep your hand raised. Um, if you're abstaining or voting against, then you may privately message me. Yay, congrats, Ananya, your bill passes. Um, this seems like an awesome caucus. All right, next we have um, the co-chair's bylaws amendment headed by Executive President Mullen. Um, Sam, would you like me to screen share or would you like to screen share? Uh, I got it, thanks. It's a rapid fire meeting. Um, but yeah, um, so this is the um, bill that is amending the, uh, lots of sections of the bylaws concerning committee chairs. Uh, before I go through these specific sections, essentially, you know, the main thrust of this bill is that we've seen, you know, not just this year, but really since the introduction of the co-chair system, that there has been, you know, various issues um, with it. So kind of, you know, taking those issues into account, what we did is um, exec thought up of basically a policy proposal to um, make the system better. Uh, we had a meeting um, about a week and a half ago with committee chairs and members of the Internal Affairs Committee. Um, to, uh, you know, essentially, you know, workshop this, get people's feedback on different ideas within it to make sure this is something that everybody was behind. Um, and, you know, that's how we got basically the bones for this proposal. And then I wrote it up. Uh, we had an IA meeting on, uh, I believe, yesterday um, to uh, iron out all the details. And uh, this is the result. So I'll walk you all through it. Also, Ireland, if you could turn that into Senator Ireland Parish there, that'd be appreciated. Um, <laughs> so... 
you know, findings here, essentially what I just talked about, you know, there's various issues. We've seen people co-chairing multiple committees that doesn't work out, they get overstretched. Um, but really, you know, the biggest issue is that um, when we have two equal co-chairs of a committee, there could be situations where, you know, if they're conflicting, there's no clear way to resolve issues um, or, you know, there's just no one where the buck really stops with. Um, so I divided this into four bylaws amendment sections. Um, this one's pretty simple. I just changed the wording to reflect a new policy. Um, every committee, except for finance and internal affairs, will now have a chair and a vice chair instead of being able to choose between a chair or co-chairs. Um, internal affairs and finance are keeping it because they have unique, um, you know, exec co-chairing systems. Um, this part, bylaws amendment two, is essentially just wording changes um, for the most part. Um, you know, this just said co-chairs, now it's chairs or vice chairs. This part is important though, uh, selection of a vice chair. Um, so this is something we talked about in the meeting. Uh, essentially the way it works is that, um, you know, we pick a chair first and then the chair either uh, at the meeting at which they're elected or at the following meeting uh, have the ability to, or not have the ability, they are required to appoint the co-chair and, or rather a vice chair. And that vice chair must be uh, approved by a two thirds vote of the committee. So what that does is it gives the chair the flexibility to pick someone that they'd like to work with, but gives gives the committee input on you know making sure that they're okay with it. Essentially, uh, bylaws amendment three. Um, you know the first part of this is just changing wording in the uh, co-chair cooperation plan section. Um, to this is mostly unchanged, but it's you know changing wording, nothing to just semantics there. Um, but these parts are fairly important. So this lays out that um, if the chair is, you know, removed for any reason, and this comes up later too, the vice chair does not automatically become the chair. And the reason we did that is, you know, people aren't angels. We need to create systems that reflect, you know, different types of, you know, scenarios. And one scenario we wanted to protect against is a vice chair attempting to remove the chair so they could become the chair. So the vice chair does not automatically become the chair if the chair is removed but they are free to run in the ensuing election. Um, but this just lays out the responsibilities of the vice chair. Um, you know, first of all, as it says here, the vice chair is the chair when the chair is absent. Uh, and they also, you know, their role is to generally assist the chair. I wanna be clear that this does not mean that it's a system where the chair and the vice chair do all the work, just like the co-chair system isn't supposed to be a system where the co-chairs do all the work, you know, like the chair and the vice chair should still delegate tasks out, but the vice chair is the chair's partner. Um, and this last part uh, discusses, you know, it's also wording a little bit, so it just removes section six because that specifically, our subsection six here, because that specifically, you know, discusses co-chairs. Um, and, you know, this again, the vice chair shall not automatically succeed the chair. And here it lays out, um, this part's important. It lays out the procedure for removing a vice chair. So for background here, uh, the discussion we had in the meeting with the chairs and internal affairs members is that we wanna give the chair the flexibility to remove the vice chair to reflect their leadership role within the committee. Um, but we don't want the vice chair to, you know, be in a situation where they feel constantly, you know, threatened by arbitrary removal by the chair, because, you know, that's a breeding ground for toxic relationships. So originally what we decided to do was just have a system where it's essentially subject to exec authority. So I won't read it word for word here, but as you can see, it essentially, you know, if the chair wants to remove a vice chair, they need to tell exec why, and then exec will evaluate whether that's the right course of action or whether, um, you know, or whether they should pursue something else. Um, and upon Kobe's very helpful suggestion, um, we also decided to add a alternative method where, you know, they could chairs could go to the committee to remove a vice chair in case the executive board, um, you know, has some sort of fault because, you know, just because you're on the executive board doesn't mean you're perfect either. Um, so, you know, that's an important part of this. And this is actually mostly unrelated to chairs and vice chairs. Uh, I just noticed that there was nothing in the bylaws discussing resignation procedures um, for chairs or co-chairs or anything. So this, you know, really isn't as important. It's pretty boilerplate, but I put it in there to cover up, um, you know, an issue we had with the bylaws. Um, so that is that. I would welcome any questions, concerns, comments, discussion. We don't have to go straight to a vote if people don't want to. And uh, thank you. Okay. Um, if anyone wants to motion, you may do so now. Um, you can motion for a moderate caucus or for a Q&A or to move into voting procedure.
We should move into voting procedures. Seconded. Awesome. Um, all in favor of moving into voting procedure, please go to the reactions tab and hit the raise hand feature. If you're voting against or if you're um, abstaining, then you can privately message me. Okay, it looks like we are now in voting procedure. All in favor of passage of the bylaws amendment, please go to the reactions tab and hit the raise hand feature. If you're voting against or if you're abstaining, you may privately message me. And can we make sure that everyone votes? So Angela, can you vote? Um, I think that's it. Okay, uh, congrats, Sam. It passes with a two thirds vote. Um, so we'll be making those changes to the bylaws soon. All right, um, our next bill is the funding bill for JHU Green Group Sustainability Initiative. Um, so Senator Ha, um, if you want, you can um, screen share or I can screen share whatever you want. Um, the person uh, presenting this bill, like the person in charge of like this group isn't here right now. Should we wait for her to get here? She should be here soon or should we just move on to the next bill? We can move on to the next one and then come back to this if you want. Uh, okay, yeah, that sounds good then. All right, then we're gonna go straight to the agro microscope microscopy funding bill um, and President Mudrak is presenting that. Um, Nathan, you can screen share if you want or you, I can screen share if you want me to. Cool, cool, cool. Do you mind throwing it up there, Mahak? Yeah, I got you. Thanks. Y'all don't need to see my iPad. <laughs> okay, just let me know where you want me to go to. Yeah, if you could. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, um, y'all asked for a funding bill, so we've got a funding bill, and then the other bill that we've skipped past is also going to be um, regards to funding. So hopefully we can get some of our money spent because, as Addy kind of mentioned, even with like these two bills passing, we're going to have like we're going to be like eight thousand dollars in the black just within SGA's budget. So um, figure it's important to try to do as much as we can for students. Um, so for those who don't know, when I'm not involved in SGA, probably the thing I'm most involved with is um, Agara Bio, which is a community organization whose goal is to engage as broad a swath of students at Hopkins in biology as possible and, always, and also make it like accessible and create a community space both for biology students to gather, but also um, a broader swath of the Hopkins population just to engage with all different things bio. So for instance, last week we did an agar art event where we had a lot of art students come in and we got um, colored bacteria that um, people could draw on and make really cool designs. Um, that would then grow over the next couple of days right this week we're actually doing a succulent event but then we also do more hardcore bio stuff so um, we do like primary design workshops we bring in professors we just had someone in from the broad institute um, computational biology labs with like grad students from labs so we just try to get broad swath of you know the biological experience but the key to our point is that we really base ourselves off of community labs that are found across the country and that everything is designed to be accessible and available to students so you can come in if you have an idea for something you want to work on. We're prepared. We have people who staff the lab during our open hours where you can just come in, ideate a project and um, put it into action. And we just have um, specific um, like protocols, experiments that are pre-designed for students who just want to kind of get a sense as to like, what do you do in a lab? And they can come in and just have someone walk them through step by step how to do it. And so, you know, we are currently set up for we have a lab space uh, and we're currently set up for a lot of uh, molecular biology experiments. But one thing that we're particularly lacking is microscopy capabilities. Um, and so I figured this was a good opportunity as we're um, kind of discussing how we can engage a broad swath of campus in activities, like kind of as we talked to Addy a few weeks ago um, about like sustainable like equipment funding when we have this extra uh, money that we have the opportunity to spend. Uh, figured it would be good a good opportunity for us to get the cap capability for um, students to actually, you know, use a microscope outside of a class. Um, and so this um, bill just funds that. It just gives us a piece of equipment that'll probably last us 10, 20 years um, that'll allow students to kind of come in. We have about 170 members currently in the organization, but most people who are in our, like who come to our events oftentimes aren't even in the organization. We just kind of advertise on an event to event basis. 
Um, and yeah, you know, we're, we're hopeful that this will allow us to do a lot more um, cool stuff for students. Um, and I would, yeah, interest if anyone has any questions, um, I'm here for it. Oh, um, one thing just to note, thank you for doing that, Mahak. Um, so it passed finance with everything in black, um, kind of after further kind of conversations with the Agara team, conversations with people on SGA, figured it kind of made sense um, for um, Agara's, um, for like us to fall a little bit more in line with what student organizations normally request, even though, you know, this is a piece of lab equipment, so it typically does cost more. Um, we figured um, that shaving a thousand bucks off it would probably put it more in line with things that are normal. So um, stuff in red or edits to the bill um, per our bylaws, um, if the committee chair approves it, which she has, um, and I approve it, we can just introduce the bill like that. So the bill that we would be voting on is what's written in red with the strike through removed. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Awesome, thank you, Nathan. Um, would anyone like to motion for a Q&A, moderate caucus, or to move into voting procedure? Can I motion for a nine minute moderated caucus with 45 seconds sleeping time? Uh -huh. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, all in favor of a nine minute moderate caucus with 45 seconds speaking times, please go to the reactions tab and hit the raise hand feature. If you're voting against or if you're abstaining, then you may privately message me. Wait, point of order, Mahak, should I vote on the logistical things for the bill? Yeah, because I have a conflict of interest with the bill's vote itself. Oh, well, yeah, because you're part of Agara. Um, I guess yeah. you cannot. Yeah. Okay, so then it's an abstention. Yeah. Okay, it looks like we are in a nine minute moderate caucus for 45 seconds speaking times. Um, can everyone lower their hands? So then if you want to be added to the speakers list, um, you can raise your hand. So if you don't lower your hand, I'm going to call on you to speak. Okay. Um, with that, um, Karen, the floor is yours. Um, I just had a few points I wanted to make that I made in committee yesterday already. Um, as a person that's like dealt closely with SAC and funding student groups this semester and last semester, we've never really funded um, this big of a purchase for one thing. Like this is a microscope, which originally was $3,000 for $2,000, which is quite an exponential amount, even though we have uh, leftover money. And I guess my second point would be um, well, maybe more than that. Uh, would there would be like other places that um, we could get this microscope from because um, we are a huge research institution and I feel like there are microscopes even though if we have to go through like a safety process that we would be able to get for this group. And then my third thing is uh, commonly we use like SGA grants for like people that know SGA senators or like SGA senators themselves and um, I think that in and of itself is unfair, but that's a whole different topic that hopefully will be addressed at some point next year. And then um, where would where was the extra $1,000 coming from? I know this is a moderated caucus, but um, that was being cut off. Um, I If there's still time left, I yield my time to Nate. So the- Yeah, I was- But Nathan, okay. you can go ahead. Yeah, I was not fully prepared for the Q&A, so I did not write down all the questions. I think just to um, kind of get to the points I remember, um, you know, kind of as we discussed in the Finance Committee and appreciated your vote for it, by the way, um, the, uh, in terms of like Agara's um, like contribution, so we're prepared to contribute about a thousand. Um, we operate off of a grant that's not funded by SGA right now that we are um, SGA recognized now. Um, and so, you know, the, the thing to, you know, from our perspective is just that all our money is currently allocated towards something. Um, anything that we contribute towards the microscope is something that's taking away from something else that we're doing for students. Um, that being said, um, I agree that, you know, I think just the precedent shouldn't be set that SGA pays for 100% of whatever anything is, which is why I think that it makes sense that um, we contribute that um, thousand. Um, I think, you know, the, reason it's not, you know, even more is just the fact that like what we're doing to take, a, you know, to contribute our amount is taking away from things that we're doing for students, whereas SJ just has this extra money hanging around. And so um, it's not necessarily taking away from students if we spend it. The only thing that, 
you know, really needs establishes the precedent, which I think is, you know, like you mentioned, important. Um, I've got something else on the other points, but I assume I'm past my time, right? I can't see, even see Mahak. Yes, um, okay. I can add you onto the speakers list after China goes next. Sure. China, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I would just like to uh, applaud uh, Nathan's efforts here. I think that this is a great bill um, that really would help uh, us to project a great image uh, onto the student community. And so, you know, I, I strongly urge uh, all, all people to um, vote for a bill because I think that, you know, it is great um, that Nathan has initiated uh, such a great initiative. And I do think that it would have a really great impact on the uh, uh, student community as well as, um, you know, our image as a student government in general. I yield the rest of my time to the floor. Okay. Um, Nathan, you're going to be next, and then I'm putting myself on the floor and then to all. So go ahead. Beautiful. Um, so yeah, just the two other questions I kind of remembered um, on the like, you know, SGA members involved in groups point. I think, first of all, I agree that I think it's something we've discussed long before that, you know, the, the advertising of these grants is not as good as it should be. It's why I try to put it at the end of every email I send out to juniors. Um, I don't think necessarily though the conversations have ever been trying to take away from funding that we provide to people, um, to groups in which SGA members are a part as it is just trying to ensure that we're engaging a broader swath of the community. Just because I think if we all added up all the groups that we all are involved in here, like someone has a conflict of interest with every group. And so that would be kind of problematic to like set as a precedent. The other thing I just wanna add in terms of cost, I mean, I think this is much more in line with what is normal. Um, we didn't spend as much money um, this year just because of COVID, but like the next bill that's coming up is like, what is it, 1200, 1300 for stickers. And so I think like 1900 for like a fluorescent like research grade microscope, um, which is gonna be pretty well utilized is something that I think is gonna provide a really great benefit for the student body. And it's a benefit that extends beyond just one event and kind of continues for what is typically, you know, 10, 20 years. And we have the maintenance um, budget set aside for it. We just need help fronting the upfront costs. Thank you, Nathan. Um, okay, so I guess I'm next. Just a quick question. So if we don't spend our SGA money, it just goes back into like, the dean of student life like fun like we can't like it does it like um like us not spending money now it doesn't do anything for our budget next year right i yield my time to karen um, i think calvin can better answer that oh, question sorry. Calvin, yes you be able to. <laughs> okay uh is this it, it, what am i doing am, am i on the timer or what are we doing oh i just yielded my time to you yes okay um, so yes, the money would be recalled and then reallocated to you. So it doesn't like go into a void and go away. If that's the question, um, the money is reallocated. Um, I would say, uh, uh, yes, the recall, the recall process, uh, means that the money is recalled. This is not new. This is, you know, a common practice. This also means that if you overspend, um, we have to recall, we would have to make up the difference um, if you were to overspend your budget too. So it, it works in both directions. If you don't have any funds, we have to find the money to fix it. If you do have the money, we recall what is it, what is left. And that's uh, in a zero-based budget model, which is what the university operates in, to answer that question. Okay, thank you. Um... All right, I guess Harvey is next, though. So. Hi, thanks, everyone. Um, so figured I might as well use what will probably be my last speech with SGA for this year uh, to speak in support of a, of a proposal. Um, I do think that anything we can do to improve academic access, especially to the sciences at a research institution like Johns Hopkins, is definitely worth whatever the cost is. And beyond that, the fact that this is money that'll either be going away if we don't spend it. I mean, on one hand, of, I'm looking at it as a wasted opportunity if we don't fund it, right? We've been asking ourselves for weeks, what do we do with our leftover budget? I have messages from Addy going back months about how do we spend our excess so that way it doesn't get recalled. And now we're at the last minute, clock's about to strike midnight. Let's spend it. Let's help some kids out. I yield any remaining time to the floor. Thank you, Harvey. Um, next, we have Karen, Calvin, and then Addy. 
Um, uh, I guess I just wanted to quickly uh, reiterate, I guess, Nathan's point about um, funding for uh, the sustainability groups versus like this group. I think for the sustainability groups, the main purpose isn't to fund like the snicker stickers. The stickers are for like 20 groups with like 60 to 100 people. I think as a part of like funding for groups in general, we want to try to like fund groups that have big events that will benefit the student body in general rather than just like one thing for like one group. I think that's where I'm coming from. Like I, I agree with the concept of like who wants to generally better the student body, but I guess that's my point to that. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Karen. Next we have Calvin. I'm gonna to defer to Addie and I'll go after her. Okay, Addie, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say a couple things. So the first thing is, um, in response to Harvey's comment, like, yes, we've been talking about ways to spend money, but not necessarily just so that it's not recalled, because I think there's a difference in spending money responsibly and spending money just to like spend it. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. Um, and then my second point is I wanted to also um, like to say what Karen was saying about um, groups and like making sure that when we do spend in general we want to make sure that we are benefiting the whole student body um it's just something to keep in mind um and i just also wanted to say <laughs> yeah harvey um and i just i uh, wanted to also say that from here forward like i think this is a really good opportunity for us to like because you know seniors leaving like everything i think it's just a good opportunity for us to look at how we're spending and and like make good decisions and like things that will help the whole student body and things that actually like make sense and that are like we have the chance to change from just like spending to you know doing it well and responsibly so i just want to put that out there and make sure that like we all think about that and continue to think about that moving on but i'll go back to calvin i just wanted to make that clarification really quickly so thanks um so the moderate caucus has expired could someone motion to extend it yeah, I'll motion to extend it by 10 minutes, the same 45 second speaking times. Uh, would you, could you extend it nine minutes because you can't do 45 second speaking times with 10 minutes? Sure, nine minutes. Matter. Okay, um, could I get a second? Second. second it. Okay, all in favor of extending the moderate caucus, please go to the reaction stop and hit the raise hand feature. If you're abstaining or voting against, then you can privately message me. Hey, uh, good evening. Am I? Uh, uh, yeah, you're good, Tom. Okay, great. Um, so, a couple things, just as a, as as a, a point of information. Um, so, with respect to equipment like this, um, I think the first thing that will need to be addressed is that this equipment either cannot be purchased or cannot be used through an academic area. Um, when we look at from a fiduciary standpoint, and just so we're clear. Um, I am I am the fiduciary of the funds for F SGA. Um, the question that's going to be asked of me is that is this as a duplicative purchase, and is this something that could be done under a different unit based on where this organization lives? Um, I don't know that I understand or heard the answer to that question. Um, but that is going to be a question when this purchase comes up. And that's not a Calvin question. That's a budget, uh, a budget and business office question. And so I think it's going to be important, um, you know, and Nathan, we can talk about this offline, um, but that is going to need to be addressed before the business office will allow us to make this purchase. Um, as a research institution, I would imagine we have microscopes. I would imagine we have these other things. And why is this a function of the Student Government Association. So that needs to be clear um, so that we, we would even be eligible to make this purchase, if that makes sense. So just because you have money um, doesn't mean you can spend it um, because this seems like something good to do. Um, there has to be a business justification um, in that space. Thank that's, you, Calvin. Yeah, no problem. Um, so because everyone raised their hand, I feel like I kind of got lost on the speaker's list, but I remember Ben and Nathan were on it. So if you still want to be added to the speaker's list and keep your hand raised, if you do not, then please lower your hand. Okay. Um, Nathan, you can go ahead and then Ben. Yeah, I appreciate all the feedback. Um, just to kind of clarify, because I know Agara kind of sits in a weird place. 
Um, so on the large events portion, I mean, I think that the real benefit to students is that this lasts a long time and that like core to our mission is engaging people outside of the biology sphere. And so we do events all the time, like I said, two in the last week um, that we try to reach out as far as possible um, to students to get them engaged um, in biology. Um, and so having this is going to enable a number of events moving forward in terms of our membership, which again, a lot of our events don't actually come from our membership. We have 170 people active in our Slack as of our last audit at the end of, or at the beginning of the semester. Um, more if you count campus groups, but I honestly don't because I feel like you have to be in um, like the Slack to really like be considered like an active member. Um, and then there was another point. Uh, oh, and I guess just, just to clarify, um, we are like a student group. Um, all our activities are, um, are, you know, for an extracurricular basis, um, the 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 purchase would fall under like different events that we run. So I anticipate that you know if it's framed correctly, there shouldn't be an issue, and we haven't had that in the past. Hey, can I just make a point of clarification? Yeah. Slack is not an official system of record, so whatever's happening in Slack from a business office standpoint doesn't matter. So what's happening in campus groups is all you got. Um, if you'd like that number, it's like 140. Um, it's okay. just that if you add in those members to the Slack, it, it exceeds 200, but we just have things in different Great. places. I, I think um, that's, gonna be, that's the number. The, the number you're going to have to work through is the campus groups number, because that's the one that matters to the people that I have to report, report to. And uh, then I think the second piece that I, I would love for you to talk to when you have a chance um, is... Is there a, a, a process by which you can engage and utilize this equipment that is currently purchased by the university? That's a question I'm going to get. Um, so that's really a question that I have. Uh, thank you, Calvin. Um, next, we have Ben. Yeah, I just wanted to talk about like how so finance does usually fund more like event specific things. And we're always talking about like, oh, it's great if we, this can be for the like a, a specific event that can attract a lot of people. But I think why it makes sense to fund a microscope, even though it is a very large purchase and not for a singular event that can be like flashly advertised is because it is um, but very much a reusable resource. So that even though, it, though it's not attached to a single event, like I can personally attest that I am not at all interested in biology, but have been seeing things about Agara bio events since last May. Um, and I think that there's very much a lot of student reach um, even outside of existing members. And so even if we evaluate it under um, the criteria we have for, um, um, for like events and whatnot, I think it definitely does reach a ton of students. Um, and also the fact that it lasts so long means that even if it's not multi-hundred person um, events each time over 20 years or whatever Nathan said the lifespan of a microscope is, I think we can easily expect it to be worth it because that's like a couple dollars per event over 20 years that I think makes a lot of sense. Uh, thank you, Ben. Um, next, we have Mariano. I don't know if that was my mistake. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna... sorry. Yeah, that's a mistake. Okay. Um, we're going to do Nathan and then Sam. And then I think the moderate caucus might expire. So go ahead, Nathan. Yeah, I appreciate the points that have been made. Just to clarify, in terms of storage, uh, we have a lab space in G72. It would go there. Um, in terms of using other resources, um, so the way like things typically work with just with our lab safety protocols, we specifically have access to one building or to one room and that room does not have access to the microscopy resources. We could see about getting other access to other microscopes. The issue is, is that typically when we have our open hours, that's when other classes are in session. The other point is, is they, do, they don't quite do exactly what we want them to do. And with um, our ability to do cell culture, which is one of the things that students have been really asking us to do, you need instantaneous access to a microscope because you need to do cell counts um, pretty regularly. And so um, having like, we have had to um, use microscopes in the past, but it typically involves like several week long conversations with PIs to get access to like a 30 minute block booked on a microscope, uh, which is just not feasible for kind of what we're looking at um, 
you know, doing moving forward for students and what students have asked us to do. Um, so, you know, definitely something we considered, um, but generally speaking, I mean, I think it's the same reason that you have like, you know, 10 individual microscopes in each classroom that, you know, are not quite what ours are gonna be, but, you know, it's just that you need that accessibility in order to do what you need to do um, for the particular experiments. Um, but happy again, Calvin, to talk with you about that offline if we need to get more in the nitty gritty for a proposal. Thank you, Nathan. Um, next we have Sam. I'll defer to Anthony and go if there's time after. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that like, I kind of see both sides of it. Like if this is something that's gonna benefit a bunch of people and bring people out for events, I think we're it's a good thing. But I would also like to say that um, just kind of stepping back a little bit, how we talked about how this, this is a process that's open to other groups as well, but something that not necessarily a lot of people know about. So I just hope that if we do decide to fund this and go forward with it, if next year or whatever happens and someone else comes up to us with a larger purchase request, we give it the same amount of thought, we talk it through so that we're not giving kind of like a, hypo a hypocritical uh, evaluation on whether we're going to fund large purchases like this. Thank you, Anthony. Um, Sam, we still have some time left, so you can go ahead. All right. Yeah, no, I mean, one, I definitely agree with Anthony. I mean, you know, part of my general, you know, semi discomfort is that, you know, there's been similar purchase requests of this size that have not been approved this year. Um, but, you know, the other thing, too, and I guess this is half a question, half a statement is, you know, I'm concerned about, you know, who specifically this is actually benefiting. Um, you know, we've heard a lot that this will benefit people, and I'm sure it will benefit some people, but I'm concerned that, you know, instead of benefiting the student body at large, this will just be benefiting, some, you know, just one student group. Because when we fund student events, the reason we do that is because we're trying to create a better student experience for the public. Like, you know, when we fund fireworks for Spring Fair, when we fund, you know, Planet Runway for Students for Environmental Action, which unfortunately didn't happen this year, we're giving them money because that's an event that's open to the public. So, you know, like, is this something that's accessible to the public? Is it something that everybody can do? Like, do you have to be a member of the club to be able to use it? Like, those are questions that, you know, I think would be helpful to have some, you know, clarification on. Um, and, you know, I'd also be interested in knowing how exactly, um, you know, this is something that the public will benefit from and the public can access beyond, you know, being a member of the club for six months. Um, so we have like 10 seconds left. So Nathan, you can go ahead and then we're going to end it. Gotcha. So again, just to emphasize core to our mission is that we're accessible to everyone. So like Harvey and Ben and others mentioned, we try to get a really broad advertisement for our events outside beyond our organization. And then even internal to our organization, that's about 170 people. So it's a really large um, breadth of students that we get. Most are not bio majors, but really key is that we have these open lab hours. And that's what this microscope would primarily be used for, which allows anyone to walk in get the training that they need and actually be able to use this, which to be noted, the BME department has this, but that is closed off to just BME majors. So our goal is to kind of have a resource like this that's really accessible to everyone who's not a BME major. Uh, Sam, I, I could not answer that question. Uh, awesome. Thank you, Nathan. Um, all right, so the moderate caucus has expired. Um, we can now motion to move into Q&A, extend moderate caucus um, or um, go into voting procedure. Motion to move into voting procedures. Do I have a second for that? I am seconded. Okay, all in favor of moving into voting procedures so we're not yet voting on the actual bill itself, please go to the reactions tab and hit the raise hand feature. All right, we are now in voting procedure. Um, because I think there might be some contention on this bill, um, we're gonna vote a little differently. Um, so we're gonna do like yes votes and then no votes. So all in favor of passage of the bill, raise your hand. Um, if you are not in favor of passage of the bill, then lower your hand because we will be doing a vote on that next. So to clarify, only have your hand raised if you want this bill to pass. If not, please lower it now. Okay. Um, 
Thank you. If you are in favor of, uh, like if you do not want this bill to pass, then you may raise your hand now. Make sure you've only voted once. If you voted against, would you mind private messaging me as well? I would appreciate that just so I can keep it for the records. Okay, awesome. Uh, thank you guys. So this bill passes, um, only four voted again. So congrats, Nathan. Um, and I hope Agara Bio enjoys the microscope. <laughs> um, all right. We're gonna go on to the next bill, which is the funding bill for JHU Green Group's sustainability initiative presented by Senator Ha. Um, Karen, would you like me to screen share? Or would you like to screen share? I'm gonna turn it over to Mac Taylor. Okay. He's here to speak about this bill. Hi, um, I can screen share this. All right, um, can anyone see this? correctly? Yeah. Great. Okay. So hi, my name is Mac Taylor. I'm a senior from uh, the Sustainability Leadership Council and here to present our bill for the funding of incentives for the JHU Green Group's 2021 Sustainability Initiative. So the JHU Green Group's initiative is in its first year this year, and it's basically a campus-wide sustainability initiative aimed at student groups across campus. And so basically the Sustainability Leadership Council is a council on campus comprised of staff, faculty, and students on campus. And it's divided into four committees aimed at promoting sustainability and advice to the provost um, in areas of academics, operations, engagement, and research. And this initiative emerged out of the student alumni sub uh, working group from under the engagement subcommittee. And the Sustainability Leadership Council created a document called the Sustainable Living Guide that um, outlined actions and resources for sustainable behaviors and options here in Baltimore. And we found that uh, students at Hopkins are generally aware of sustainable options that they can be undertaking, but wanted to provide resources and information on specifics to the surrounding area. So with this guide, the Hopkins students are able to gain familiarity with the specific behaviors that they can undertake in the Baltimore committee or community and that are applicable to other living spaces if they're in a remote setting. And the key tenet of this is that as Hopkins students, we are very much ingrained in the Baltimore community and no matter where you are. Um, and so we found that it was very important to have everyone aware of actions and behaviors that they could be undertaking. And this, this document, which is, I actually have right here, if anyone wants to see, uh, just outlines uh, different sectors of actions and behaviors that they can be undertaking. So we wanted to basically figure out a way that we could share this document with the most amount of Hawkins students uh, and wanted to use a structural system to engage and encourage participation in adopting some of these behaviors. And to encourage this, we found that there were two manners of doing this. One was using a leadership structure of student groups. And the second was using incentives to encourage this. So the use of incentives is one of the main um, promotion, uh, main mechanisms to promote willingness to act in sustainable behaviors. And so that's how we came up with the use of the JHU Green Group's 21 Sustainability Initiative. So what this initiative does is it encourages Hopkins students within the student groups to adopt sustainable behaviors over a month long period. So it started on March 29th and is running through the end of this week. And uh, it's using incentives as one of the mechanisms to encourage participation to induce individual behavior uh, within the realm of sustainability. And these incentives uh, we're ensured to be under the realm of the spirit of sustainability uh, to be in line with the uh, initiative. And so we're using the company EcoEnclose, which I can also pull this up. Uh, basically the stickers are biodegradable, sourced from post-consumer face stock and are 
were created by members of the community, Hopkins community. So it mean, really was like a close to home and stayed close or stayed online of the spirit of sustainability. Um, and how the initiative runs is basically, again, use top-down leaderships within student groups to circulate the sustainable, sustainable living guide to heighten familiarity with sustainable resources within the Baltimore area. And it has four key components. So that's adopt, discuss, register, and engage. So for the month long, uh, there are four week long periods. The first students are asked to adopt a new sustainable behavior each week from the sustainable living guide. Each week we created discussion guides on specific topics for sustainability. So those were, the first week was introduction to sustainability. The second week was living sustainably during COVID-19. The third week was environmental justice. And the fourth week was wrap up developing behaviors into habits. And after having these discussions with st within student groups, we asked students to register their participation and the actions that they undertook on Hopkins groups. So they submitted pictures of the actions that they did on Hopkins groups through one weekly checklist submissions. And then we asked that they engage using a hashtag JH group, green groups on social media. And so we were able to encourage participation by uh, saying at the end of the month, uh, stick with one of these. And if you do the top uh, the groups who have the top highest levels of overall percent participation will receive prizes based on overall percent participation within three tiers of winners. So 80 to 100% will be the green tier and we'll receive a green tier prize, which will be a sticker design for a green tier, silver 60 to 80, a silver tier prize and bronze 40 to 60, a silver or a bronze tier sticker. Um, and how we were going to roll this out is that upon receipt of funding, I would be able to order the three levels of stickers from Eco and Close and get in contact with the leaders of student groups who attained high levels of percent participation within their student groups and, sorry, and then distribute them within a COVID friendly manner. And so in terms of funding, the site itself has a $500 sticker or 500 not dollar, 500 unit minimum per sticker, which actually works out perfectly for the numbers that we have. So we have currently 20 groups participating and the student groups range in size from about 60 members to 120. So we're seeing excellent participation so far. So the numbers turn out from having about a minimum of 900 stickers turned out to a maximum of about 1900 stickers needed. So, uh, the numbers needed, the numbers round out to a mean of about 1500. And so the stickers are 75 cents per unit. And the type that we are ordering is zero waste liner, varnished paper, individual die cut, minimum 500, two inch circle. That's just the specifics. And the overall cost is $1,125, which is 375 per type of stickers. And those are based on the current rates of participation. And just in terms of timeline, we're currently in process of the initiative. It's we're in our last week, but that is our initiative. Please let me know if anyone has any questions. Thank you. Um, all right, would anyone like to motion for a moderate caucus, a Q and A or to move into voting procedure? Um, motion for a Q and A um, session, a, a five minute Q and A session with 30 seconds speaking time. Awesome. Can I get a second? Seconded. Okay. All in favor of a five-minute Q&A with 30 seconds speaking times, please go to the reactions tab and hit the raise hand feature. If you're abstaining or voting against, you can privately message me or Brianna. Okay, it looks like we are in a five minute Q&A. Um, JJ, the floor is yours. If your hand is raised, then I'm gonna assume you're on the speakers list. Um, if you do not want to be on the speakers list, then please lower your hand. Um, okay, thanks Mac for all the work uh, you've put into this. And I think it's a really exciting opportunity, um, but could, can you just explain to everyone like how, how you will make sure that like, cause, cause there's prize involved. Like, how are you gonna confirm that the student works participating are actually doing what they're supposed to be doing? And how are you planning to distribute the stickers so that um, it's not like the shipping fee and all that will not defeat the purpose of sustainability? 
I yield my time if there's any time left. Go ahead, Mac. Oh, thanks, I didn't know if I could just respond. Um, so based on the Hopkins group platform, I have, um, I'm on the other side. So I'm seeing everyone's submissions and can uh, calculate all the statistics. So that's how I can see everyone's percent participation and I'm able to calculate and make sure that everyone's actually participating. So based on all of those results, I'm able to actually make sure that everyone's doing the work and that anyone who would be receiving the prizes would be worthy of having received them. And in terms of uh, getting them out to the student group leaders, the shipping costs, all of them would just be directly shipped to one place. And then we would be able to just distribute them uh, on campus. So we would probably be able to do it from what I had in mind would just be in a COVID friendly manner. So just have them in one direct place and then have a drop off. So coordinate it with student leaders so they could just pick it up from one place and then not have to do any additional shipping and then do it within the student groups uh, to coordinate within the student groups to get it to everyone else within the student groups themselves to reduce any additional shipping costs or output. Awesome, thank you. Um, Nathan, you're up next. Mistake, sorry. Okay, um, Suva, you can go ahead, or Karen. Oh, sorry. That's a All right, I guess I'll leave you, Grace. Hi, um, I'm in one of the groups that Mac talked to um, to do this initiative. And honestly, it's been pretty impactful. Um, I've been doing some of the presentation myself and we've been getting really good engagement. So I don't know how much like actual accountability you can have about the presentations unless you literally sit in any of these groups meetings. So, but I do think that's an, that's an issue in general doing any kind of group-based thing. It's very much off of trust. Um, but yeah, what I can say is that it's been pretty impactful um, with the group that I'm in. So I think in general, it's pretty cool. Um, and I do think like, because we've all been virtual and all of these things have been virtual, having something physical might be really rewarding to people who um, have been working for this. Awesome, thank you, Grace. Um, does anyone else want to speak? Uh, if not, then would someone like to motion to close the moderate caucus? Motion to close motion. moderate caucus. Seconded. Okay, all in favor of closing the moderate caucus, please go to the reactions tab and hit the raise hand feature. If you are abstaining or voting against, then you may privately message me. Okay, looks like the moderate caucus has come to an end. Um, would anyone else like to make any motions now? Motion to vote. Could I get a second? Second. Awesome. Um, all right, all in favor of moving into voting procedure, please go to the reactions tab and hit the raise hand feature. This is us going into voting procedure, not actually voting on the bill, so. Okay, we are now in voting procedure. All in favor of passage of the funding bill, please keep your hand raised. If you are voting against or abstaining, then you may privately message me. All right, awesome. Um, looks like the bill has passed. Um, congratulations, Mac and uh, JHE Sustainability Initiative. All right. Um, so the last thing we have is the senior send off resolution um, presented by me. Um, okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Give me a second. Hey, my hair. Yes. You need to turn over the chair. Sorry? You need to turn over the chair. You can't present and be the chair. Oh, like chair the meeting? Oh. Mm -hmm. um, okay, since Will is not here, um, I'm turning the chair over to Sam. Hey, thank you for turning the chair over to me. That was my alarm. That was the old previous alarm for the water caucus. It's a duck. You guys know how it is. Executive Vice President Ali, please uh, introduce your resolution. 
Okay, I'm going to share my screen now. Okay. So since our senior class is graduating, um, we always write a cute little send off. So um, whereas this is an internal resolution that pertains to the Student Government Association onto itself rather than the university at large, and whereas the Student Government, um, Government Association members graduating this year are the senior class president, Will, um, senior class senator, Anenya, senior class senator, Cece, um, JJ, Elise, uh, Anish, and then our executive treasurer, Addie Perlman, and executive president, Sam Mullen. Um, and then whereas senior class president, Will Cho, is a two-year SJ veteran and has worked tirelessly towards a successful senior week, served as interim chair of the Senate and as head of internal affairs committee, helped pass caucus reforms and other important internal SJ reforms, and facilitated the ethics board vetting process and will doubtlessly deliver an incredible graduation address with his amazing wit. And whereas senior class senator Ananya Kalahasti is an accomplished SGA worker, has served as chair of the Committee on Student Orgs and championed student organization reform and helped facilitate the process while also establishing the Pen Pal Initiative. Um, and whereas senior class senator CC Zhang hit the ground running this past year by continuously working to improve SGA culture internally and has served as co chair of academic affairs and worked on numerous resolutions and legislation that has improved scholastic life for students. And whereas senior class Senator JJ Tai has served as co-chair of the Committee on the Health Safety, Health Safety and Sustainability um, and taken initi initiatives to work on COVID contact tracing, helped introduce the MSAC letter of support and has always lifted the mood by showing us her cats. Um, and whereas senior class Senator Elise, I'm sorry if I butcher your last name, is it Lee Wu? Um, That's fine. <laughs> Okay, started on SGA just this year, but has been a very active member, served on the student orgs and HSS committee and worked on issues pertaining to representing students. And whereas senior class senator Anish Nayak has served on academic affairs and civic engagement committee has focused in on um, a pilot funding, this SGA cycle has been necessary to facilitate debate within SGA on these topics. And whereas executive treasurer um, Andy Perlman has served on SGA as a senator for one year and as treasurer for one, has previously worked tirelessly on Wellness Week and reproductive health um, late, like last school um, year. I'm going to do last school year. Sorry, guys. Um, push countless invaluable guidelines reforming the budget process and audit process and distinguished herself as a female leading figure in SGA with her kindness and astuteness concerning the financial processes of SGA in the school and served as co-chair for the Student Services Committee previously. And whereas Executive President Sam Mullen has served on SGA's executive board for one year as president and before on Senate as senator for two years and introduced countless bills, resolutions, and initiatives focused specifically on sustainability in years past, has helped navigate a better SGA during the tumultuous times of COVID-19 and fought in an unprecedented manner for student representation on almost all student life committees and beyond and truly became a leader worth following with his characteristic charm and tenacity. Um, and whereas the senior class has worked so hard to stay committed this year, I'm going to miss all of them, SG won't be the same. Um, therefore, be it resolved that the Student Government Association thanks its graduating seniors for their undevoting, unwavering devotion to the improvement of this university, the ingenuity, the ingenuity they used over the last four years to address the challenges they had, the example of leaderships that they have set for student le leaders for years to come, and the legacy that they leave across not only our campus, but the city of Baltimore, be it further resolved that this resolution be held in the SG archives in perpetuity. And I have... It's co-sponsored by all SG members who are not graduating. Unless you do not want to, then you can probably message me. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's our senior send-off resolution. Um, we can have a moderate caucus, Q&A, or move into voting procedures. Up to move into voting procedures. As the chair uh, presiding during this resolution, I will recognize that motion and ignore Kobe's. <laughs> Seconded. Sam, your chair. Yes, yeah, I'm your chair. So you oh God. Me. Um it's the first time I've ever chaired. Um everybody, to have red robin. everybody in what? Motion to have red robin. Yeah, I mean if you want to vote no one. Red Robin, the burger place. If you red robin, robin. The game? all right. Everybody who's voting yes. Um, raise your hand if you're voting no, which means you want a round robin. Do not raise your hand. 
<laughs> voting yes to move into voting procedure to clarify. What? Because we voted to move into voting procedure. So if you're saying yes, that means you want to go into voting procedure, right? Mahag, Sam, someone, please. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Seeing a minority. We can also just talk after this, by the way. Seeing a minority, the motion topic. fails. Um, I will recognize. The seniors oh, don't graduate. Sorry, sucks for y'all. Yeah, I'm we could just talk after instead of making it an official thing. By the way. All right, I will recognize other motions now because the vote, the motion to vote has failed. Point of information: What is motion to get round robin? You just say motion to round robin. Round robin is just where every person has to talk on a subject, and then I have to take notes on what every single person says. Yeah. Okay, motion to just move into voting procedure and then save the talking for after like normal GBM. Second. All right, the motion is recognized. Raise your hand if you're in support of that motion. Seeing what is a majority, um, the motion passes. We are now in voting procedure. Uh, raise your hand if you're voting yes. Um, do not raise your hand and DM me if you're voting no. And DM me. You know, just DM Brianna. You don't have to DM me. It's fine. Kobe, are you DMing me no? Or was that just you telling the entire group no? <laughs> <laughs> that didn't clarify anything. All right. Um, Kobe, please vote. All right, the motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, Mahek, and everyone for a great year. Woo. Exciting. Can't great really cheer on you. business time. Sam, would you like to finish out the meeting or do you want me to? Uh, I think you should do it. I've, I've done my part. Okay, you just have to acknowledge that you're passing on the chair to me. All right, now that the motion has concluded, I am now passing the chairmanship back to Mahek. Okay, awesome. Hey guys, I'm back. Okay, so it looks like we have all of our new business done. Um, so we're gonna go on to prospective business, advancing legislation or announcements. So if anyone has anything they'd like to say, you can just unmute and say. Okay, go ahead, Sam. Okay, so I actually do have some real announcements um, for chairs and um, you know for chairs and class council presidents. Uh, if you look into Google Drive. Uh, what we've done in order to make sure that uh, the transition documents are findable next year um, is on the home page at the top, there's a folder called 2021 transition. And uh, within that folder, there are specific folders for uh, council docs, uh, committee docs, the exec transition, which you could, you know, snoop in if you want, uh, and uh, caucus transition docs. Uh, the caucus transition docs, we did not previously tell caucuses that you should have transition documents. Um, but I do strongly, strongly, strongly recommend it. Um, it'll make your transition easier. Um, and council and committee, um, you know, leaders, you are required to have that. So please put it into Google Drive um, once you've done that. Uh, and the second thing, uh, you know, we're attempting to plan an SGA social event. Um, I don't know if we've determined a date yet. Um, you know, maybe one of the planners should discuss that. But um, if you have not filled out that when to meet and you're interested, uh, please fill out the one to meet. And uh, yeah, thank you again for a great year. Okay. I'm Sam, gonna... there is one very important thing that Sam forgot to say. What day is it? Blue Jay Tuesday, but I did it. There we go. Day. And that's number three. And it's number um, three. Yay. Okay. I'm going to put myself next on the speakers list. Um, Talia, we will send out the one to meet again. Um, right now, me, um, Addy was working on it with. Well, she was the primary planner, but I guess I can speak on her behalf. We were thinking Friday at 2 p.m. Maybe. I, uh, that's just tentative. Yeah, if everyone could fill out the wind to meet for like this weekend a little more, because we don't have that many responses, that would be great. <laughs> yeah. Um, other than that, if um, you are going to be on SGA next year, Please, please tell everyone that you know who is going to be on SGA next year to fill out the contact sheet and the when to meet that was sent out in an email to them by tonight. Like, I will keep emailing you until you fill it out. Thank you. Um, JJ, I saw your hand was raised. Do you need to uh, say anything? No, I was just going to say happy Blue Jay Tuesday, but 
um, Brianna's story for me. I'm so, so sorry. I'm so sorry. Have feelings. Okay, does anyone have anything else? Yes, good job, gang. Good year. Good year. I put that in the notes. All right. Um, we're going to go to public input period. Is there anyone from the public here other than Aspen? Aspen, do you want to talk? You want to input something? I'm okay. Great meeting. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, would someone like to motion to end our last GBM with academic year? Motion to end the GBM. Second it. Second it. All in favor of ending the meeting, please go to the reactions tab and hit the raise hand feature. If you're abstaining or voting against, you can privately message me. What if we just didn't end the meeting? Everyone just voted no. We had to stay here. One singular no right now. Um, okay, the meeting ends because of majority. All right, I'm gonna stop. Bye,